they have really good security here, but just, I'm going to ask, did anyone come here to kill us? <laughs> Either one of us. I just want to know. <laughs> I don't like surprises. <laughs> Hi, Jenny. Hi. Congratulations. Thank you. I got two books in like three months. What the? I know. It wasn't supposed Come to be on. this way. It just sort of happened. It's like when you are having sex and you're breastfeeding and then all of a sudden you're pregnant again. That's sort of what I equate it to. That now was all not of a sudden my experience. there's another book. Yeah. I tried having sex one time when I was breastfeeding and I was like, absolutely not. No. Nope. Yeah. Sorry. Never again. <laughs> I'm getting divorced. It's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jenny. Yes. And I have known each other since... We were 12 years old. 12 years old. Sixth grade. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> you, you remember sixth grade, right? <laughs> you're just trying your hardest and you have glasses and braces and this bitch walks in. <laughs> and you're like, okay. <laughs> And I would say that we had like a very, we weren't like in the same group. No, no. But then in high school, you yes. found theater. Yes. And again, I was like, okay. <laughs> She's been here. <laughs> but then did you feel that way when I wrote a book? Oh, interesting. <laughs> were you like, um, okay. No, because I knew you were, yeah. and I had put, actually no, because I said to you, why don't you do this? That's you true. Need to write a you book. did do that. When my second book was coming That's out, right. and you said to me, no, I could never share that much of my life. I, I, I'm nervous to do that. <laughs> and now look, <laughs> literally, you're like, oh, I don't know. I couldn't do that. I, I don't know. think I could put that all out there. I and know. now look at you. And look at me now. Yeah. There's not one thing. That you guys don't know. <laughs> that people don't know about me. <laughs> so um, I guess my question is first, from our humble beginnings in Scottsdale, Arizona. Yes. Um, I don't know if most people know that your father was a local celebrity. Do you guys know that? <laughs> Jason <Jenny's>, does. <laughs> Jenny's, Jason, I'm aware that you, I've met her dad. you've met. <laughs> Once or twice. Jenny's father is Dr. Art Molin, who had several books about like being fit and was also like on the Channel 3 News when they needed a medical expert. He was as close to George Clooney as <laughs> we could get. <laughs> I'm serious. And your dad, obviously, his business, my mom went to him for the Molin Method. Yes. For the weight loss method the from Mullen the 80s. Method it was called the Molin Method. There's a book. There's a book, The Mullen Method, which my dad is wearing tiny little white shorts on the cover. He's so cute, you guys. He's, he dated every woman in the Phoenix, local Phoenix area. <laughs> I can't tell you how many people come up to me. They're like, oh, I dated your dad. <laughs> All right. I mean, I probably sat a lot of them at California Pizza Kitchen For in high sure. school. Yeah. Yes. Um, Jenny's dad had the distinction of being one of the only people that had ever tipped me as a hostess at California Pizza <laughs> Kitchen. Um, <laughs> But I just, like, I really wanted to, since we're talking about the cookbook today, yes. Dictator Lunches, I have, like, lots of specific questions about that, which is also you have been very candid about your eating disorder. Oh, yeah, it should be yeah. up here, guys. Thank you. Um, you've been very candid about your eating disorder in your other books yes. um, that you struggled with. And I wonder what part of your dad, and Art, yes. if you're watching, where is the camera for the thing? Where there, it's our there. Art's eyes. Hi, Art. Hi, Mom. In Arizona, they're not together. They're not together, guys. <laughs> that would be a great twist. They should have done it. They should have done they a viewing ended party up together at as a Aho couple. Al's. Oh, totally. You're right. <laughs> I should try to sling some books at Aho Al's. <laughs> My shirt popped open. Okay. I, Listen. I'm thinking it's getting us more viewers. So <laughs> I was down with it. I don't think anyone cares about my tits. Um. <laughs> anyway. So I was curious, like, what influence your dad, like, all of this stuff feels like, to me, it's a leading in this direction. Oh, yes. Yeah, I know. I, I think about it because it's so funny. I said to Jason the other day, it's like, of course my life has led to now I'm writing a book about healthy eating with children. And how to trick your kids into eating healthy and yes. get them to eat try new things, which exactly. in my household is the biggest issue, you know, with cricket. Oh, interesting. The trying new things. Yeah, she just won't do it. And yeah. I saw the thing, the segment on Kelly. Did you guys see Jenny on Kelly and Ryan? 
I still sometimes say Regis. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Kelly and <laughs> Kelly and <laughs> anyway. I loved the like carrot in the middle of the cucumber trick. Yes. Genius. Did you come up with that? I did. I did. So so my kids were, I had a persimmon at home, and a persimmon looks like a tomato, so they didn't want to touch it. But I know that they're sweet inside. So I remember taking a cookie cutter and like smashing a little figure out of it and then stuffing it inside a piece of apple that I had also taken a cookie cutter and, you know, shaped. And then they're like, oh, these are delicious. And what's the orange thing in the middle? I'm like, it's the fucking persimmon you didn't want to have. So... <laughs> You know, because I do think that my kids specifically, they are dictators. They control Jason and I. Jason says to me sometimes, I'll tell him the plan, and he's like, does Sid know about this? And I'm like, what do you, we, what do you mean? We are the parents. I have to remind him. Uh, Such as modern parenting. Right? Is. But yeah, feeding kids is war. It's almost impossible. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. And so you have to get smarter than them. You have to figure out, like, what kind of tactics, you know, what, what extremes you're willing to go to. But was Sid... Was Sid <laughs> Wait, how far apart are Sid and Laszlo two years? Three and a half Three and years. a half. Okay, great. Yes. We're friends. Um, <laughs> uh, was Sid a picky eater? Like, what, in introducing food, was he, like... Well, he didn't have a chance to be, because I knew, you know, from the moment he was on the scene, that we have to feed this kid crazy shit. Otherwise, you know, we're, we're going to lose this battle. So our, our first nanny, Elvie, she was from Guatemala and she would make these like black bean pupusas. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was eating all of the like Saint, yeah. Spanish rice. You know, he, he would go to town on a lot of that stuff. Um, and then, you know, I, I was thinking, oh, I'm a genius. He thinks that a date is candy and he would like do tricks for them. The way that I used to throw are like you, garbanzo you- beans at teats, my dog. <laughs> And my girlfriends are like, what, how, why does that dog even eat those? And I'm like, I don't know. He likes, the gr- it was all I had in the house. So I thought with Sid, I could do the same thing. I'll just give him a date and he'll be happy. But then, you know, he was introduced to candy and ice cream and all that. And that, then it became harder. Right. So that's my question because I had best intentions with my first child, Birdie, who's 14 now. And I will say Birdie like eats a lot of you guys are parents, right? Your moms, you're, okay, right. So we can relate on things. Um, so, and like Birdie, I, I was really proud of myself. I was like, I have the kid that like eats sushi at age three and a half. And like, you know, like right. Birdie ate everything, would try everything. And I thought that I had done something like right. Yes. And then I didn't have another kid for five years. Cricket eats mac and cheese and chicken nuggets. I cannot get the child to try anything. I did almost exactly the same things. Right. Made the fucking baby food from the farmer's market. Yeah. Yes. And she she just like hit an age and turned it off. That's interesting. Yeah. Is Laszlo Laz is, is, more picky? Yeah, for sure. I think you get one. I think you get one good eater, one picky eater, one good sleeper, one picky, one bad sleeper. That's maybe true, yes. But they, they like to sort of team up together. So like if one person's revolting, then the insurrection ensues. I don't really get one of them sort of behaving. They kind of just turned to my house, just evolves. So you had, no. So you had, like, tried to introduce Sid to a bunch of, like, different things yes. as he was a baby. Yes. Okay. And he was eating everything. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then he found out that there were other things in the world aside from, uh, you know, the stuff that I had at my house. And he went nuts. Then he was like a drug addict. <laughs> he was literally hooked on sugar. Jason and I were concerned. We're like, something happens to him. He's like too excited. And maybe, and then, he, you know, Jason's like, oh my God, we're giving him issues. Maybe like we need to like chill out. But I, I kept telling Jason, no, we have to double down. Like we have to stick the path. Like, we have to stick to like our original sort of thesis, which was like, if we expose you to enough foods, you're going to have an appreciation and your palate's going to grow. And, you know, the more we dumb it down, the more dumb shit you're going to like. So let's continue with, you know, the original mission. And then, I mean, I'm impressed by him now, right? He is pretty impressive. (laughs) Jason's like, (laughs) yeah. Yeah. Well, Jason also was raised on processed cheese. He's going to die soon anyway. Like, we can't worry about Jason. It's too late for him. No, it's too late for me, too. We need to focus on my kids. It's too late for me. 
Uh, we, we're done. We just you know how much we had McDonald's kids. in my house growing up? No. A lot? Jenny. Where was there a McDonald's? Was, <laughs> we grew up in the same town. It was <laughs> off Hayden Road. You wouldn't even know. It was right <laughs> by Ranch where Realty where my mom worked. It was dinner oh. like five nights a week. <laughs> no. Barbara, it wasn't. I'm sorry. I know you're watching at home. I know, Mom. You did, you did a good job. You cooked. <laughs> we, were, we were like, yeah, it was just, it's just different. Like the families that grew up eating... Yes, salads foods. and yeah, we had iceberg lettuce and yeah. stuff. A lot, yeah, right. My dad loves an iceberg lettuce. Well, who doesn't love a wedge? It's his favorite, an iceberg lettuce, um, a trough. But of I guess, iceberg lettuce. <laughs> but so this is a thing. That, so I guess, like, I want to talk a little bit about. Well, first of all, social media and like the evolution of the lunches, the way you title things and in this book we were just talking backstage i mean this it's there are some controversial controversial titles titles of these lunches in there yes um but like so fun and did you start doing it just to entertain yourself at night after they were going to bed yes it's like you know how you're into crafting you understand yeah It's, it's a lot of crafting and i would find myself in the kitchen at night bored Unable to turn on the television, unable to work it. Um, I don't even know. Yeah, there are too many remotes to know how to turn it on. I don't know how to do any of it, yeah. Right? So I'd sit there in my bathrobe, and I would just be snacking and thinking about what am I going to make him for lunch? Yeah, food is like a very, Mm -hmm. food for you is like a thing. Yes, food has always equaled love. And, you know, I grew up with two parents who worked days and dated nights, like I said earlier, my dad's dated most of Arizona. Uh, and so, you know, I was a latchkey kid who didn't have, um, you know, the handwritten notes, the PB&J with the crust cut off. And I longed for that. I wanted, I wanted that type of childhood. And so, you know, when I had Sid, I'm like, I'm going to send him to school with these movable feasts. I'm going to give him this sense of constancy. I want him to feel like I'm with him even when I'm not with him. And so that's kind of how it started for me because I know I'm not the mom doing drop off. I'm not the mom doing, you know, mm-hmm. doing pickup. Yeah. And um, no, I know my favorite thing ever is like, hey, stranger. <laughs> yes. and I'm like, hi, how's it going? Exactly. Yes, you've been working a lot, huh? And I'm like, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Just not at school. <laughs> like, yes, exactly. that was in LA. New York's a different experience. Yeah, New York's different. Yeah, they're like, what's wrong with her? Yeah, it's not, <laughs> it's not the same. Um, I love that. And like, what was your frustration level when the lunchboxes came back full? So I try I to assume not, they did. Yeah, a lot of times things come back and I try not to invest in sort of what's coming back because I know that I'm playing the long game. I know that by exposing <laughs> them, it's I'm making progress. I know that, you know, for my kids, it's like I would throw lettuce in the box often and I wasn't expecting them to eat the lettuce or the radish or what, you know, whatever the little side was. I don't want to really eat a radish. No. Even when it's like with butter and salt, I'm like, really? Yes, but just seeing it, I knew that by, just by seeing it, I was making some sort of headway. And now my kids will sit there and they'll eat a, eat a leaf of lettuce. They don't even notice what they're doing. They're just like noshing. I so, remember, because Birdie's a little bit older than Sid, I remember, this looks so good though. I want you to make me lunch. I, w- I tried to make you lunch one day. When, remember when she was sick, I was going to ma- send a dictator lunch over? You were. Yeah. I but then, what but I got all those. Jason probably ate it. Well, you sent all those gluten-free breads that were delicious. Oh, yeah, those are so good. Grain-free breads. Grain. Those are so good. Right. See, I don't know. <laughs> um, so, obviously, like, people loved the lunches on Instagram. I do want to just say, I do want to interject that I do remember a conversation with you where you were, like, busy. How do you spend all that fucking time doing those elves Yes. It's so weird and insane. How do you do it? And then you started doing the lunches, and I was like, it's the same thing. But no, the the elves are intricate. I mean, you're making dresses for them. I'm so sorry. (laughs) Ma'am. They're hanging from the chandeliers. These guys have eyes. You put eyeballs on these things. For me, again, that's what I try to explain to people. I'm like, I'm left-handed. I'm dyslexic. I can't (laughs) use scissors. You make them look like teddy bears. But it's easy shit that everyone can do. My stuff is not that next level of, you know, I work for Michael's. I craft. (laughs) I don't work for them anymore. All right. Maybe we can... 
<laughs> Look at how cute you are in this book. Okay, so you start doing the lunches, but you certainly had to add for to do this book, right? Like you had to come up with a lot more, more. stuff. Yes, for sure. Well, not what more was the stuff? process it was, like? It was more like, you know, I, I sort of broke it down to like a paint by numbers theory uh -huh. where if you, you have a main... on my crotch I have to move I'm sorry guys <laughs> it's just, I didn't know we were in high chairs okay <laughs> if you have a main a fruit a veg a snack and a bribe I thought like okay that's sort of what I need every wait, day wait, wait say it again you need a main a fruit a veg a snack and a bribe you gotta have the bribe because otherwise why are they going on the journey with you if there's wait. not like something fun to win at the end and you're just a real big fan of those dishes what are they called? The, the planet lunch. box. Yeah, the, bo yeah. the boxes that have yes. all the different sections. Because honestly, you know, I've seen other boxes. I've looked at other boxes. I've tried other boxes. I like the depth on the planet box. It's just, it's not so deep that everything I'm pushing into it is like, you know, getting are stuck in there. Are you going to make your own, like, cute one? I don't think so. Oh, why I, not? I think I'm, I'm really satisfied with this one. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate you not like needing to put something else into the world. I mean, I something. I just don't think it's a it's a, a lunch lunch box. No, with them. I mean, a collab. Yeah. Like, oh, I do collab. have a collab with them. Oh, <laughs> I do actually. Well, that's what I was asking. I okay, do. so what's the collab? What does it's it look like? Is it cute? It's very cute. It's like a terrazzo type of pattern. Very in. It's very so chic. chic millennial, and it comes out in January. <laughs> Oh my God, amazing. I'm going to get it. I'm so well, excited. I'm going to send it to you. Of course you're going to get well, it. Well, I can also support and buy things. It's okay. I'm making no money off of the deal. Wait. So it's fine. <laughs> Those kinds of things, that's like the funniest thing that I feel like people don't understand. Oh no. Is like, they're like, ooh, busy. You must be. And I'm like, I mean, no. Like, did it cover my Uber ride? I'm not even sure. No, not <laughs> particularly. Those, yeah. Well, it's fun to do those things. And certainly yeah. like you talk about it enough, you should do. And collab. I think it'll be fun because Sid actually designed the tag on the little lunch carrier. So cute. So, does he like being called the dictator? He asked, he's like, so wait, what is this book about? You know, who's the dictator? And I looked at him, I was like, you're the dictator. And he looked at me, he's like, oh good, as long as it's about me. That's amazing. That's what I'm dealing with. Yeah, no, I He tells it. us he's the main character of our family. Well, is he not? Is he wrong? <laughs> Well, the thing is this, like, Laszlo truly is the better actor. Well, obviously. The little one, the little one always shines so, brighter. I don't know. It's hard. I know. He this commits like nobody. You know what it is? The, the older one tries and yes. the little one and the just little one is. is just like is. Yeah, that's Yeah, true. that's what it is. I see it with my kids too. Like, oh, Birdie would never watch this. But like, <laughs> my old, like, Birdie, Birdie's like, never stops trying yes it, like so much so that it like breaks my heart sometimes yes and cricket just like walks into a room and i was like hey here's a one-liner and then yeah. everybody like dies yes. laughing yes exactly oh god the pain of being an older sibling oh my god i'm a younger one i'm an um, i'm an older i'm an older i know you are but you had like a an interesting upbringing because yes. you guys didn't really live together for a period of time. Exactly. Yes. So I don't know what I am to be honest. There were so many steps in and out that who knows where I where I really am in the the birth order at this point. In LA, Jenny's sister and I would do the Lek Fit workout together, and that's where we jump on trampolines and. Um, and I do it, you know, digitally now, and I still see, I saw Jenny's sister this morning on it, and I was telling Jenny about it. She's like, why didn't you screenshot it and send it to yeah, me? Yeah, I was like, how did we not get those <laughs> pics sent to us? I'll send you some. Okay. I'll send you some. It's okay. really fun. <laughs> anyway, um, so once, like, people respond, started responding to the dictator lunches, I knew you started your own account for it, which I was grateful for, because... I do like a little separation sometimes right? with, like, content. Yes. I need it. Yeah, you don't want to always have to see what Sid ate that day. That's right. It's not necessary. Right, because it, <laughs> it occasionally makes me feel bad about myself. No. Um, no, in the best way. Um, so, <laughs> was that, were you considering, like, the, the Instagram account essentially, like, your book proposal? No, I, I really started it just to sort of you know, get it off of, of everybody else's feed. I felt like people were, you know, there were people that wanted that and then there were people that just like wanted the other bullshit that I post. I love the other bullshit that you post. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I wanted to make sure they were separate. Right, but, right, right. But no, after a while, I think, you know, the, the feed was up for a while and 
I kept getting all of these incoming press inquiries, more so than anything else I've ever done in my life. It was wild. Everybody wanted to talk about these dictator lunches. Even when I was touring with the, with the novel, it, people would be like, okay, but tell us about the dictator lunches. And um, at some point earlier, you know, before obviously I went on this last press tour, I said to Jason, I said, I think there's a book in this. And he's like, like what? <laughs> about what? A coffee table book about what Sid eats? And I said, no, it's something. I don't, I, you know, I, because I'm not a cook. And who's going to buy a cookbook from somebody who's really not a trained chef? Well, that's my other question. So a lot of times I do know, you know, guys, do you know that most celebrities don't write their own memoirs? <laughs> I didn't until after I fucking turned mine in. <laughs> that's funny. I didn't know that was a thing. I assumed all these bitches were writing their fucking books. That's interesting. <laughs> Did you know that? I only knew because one of these uh, Bachelor contestants had said to me once, oh, who wrote your books? And I was like, me? <laughs> okay. I didn't even so understand similar, the question. Yeah, it didn't even occur to me it was, yeah. that somebody else would write my book, which, by the way, I wouldn't have done it anyway, probably. Maybe not. I don't know. We, we, I would have seen how I was feeling <laughs> in moments. But... <laughs> I was curious if at any point you were like, I need a chef consultant. Oh, I like, had I had a cook. You did. Who, oh, because I don't know how to write a recipe. I had to just call oh, her. Oh, right. I That's a whole skill her. set. Remember in second grade when you have to write a recipe? Oh, a, or like how to cook something? No, a tisp. I don't know. I was like, let me just tell her what I'm putting in this stuff and then she'll <gasps> oh, okay, write it amazing. in recipe form for me. Oh, okay. That's yes, so, Michelle. That sense, Michelle. So Michelle, and then Michelle once sent me back a recipe uh, oh God, it was, it, oh, in my applesauce. And she's like, and then a little bit of butter. And I was like, well, no, there's no butter going in my applesauce, Michelle. Michelle lives in Nashville, is it? She's in Nashville. So in Nashville, I, you probably, you know, butter Put and butter, applesauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goes in everything. Wow. Probably. So, so yeah, so then there was that. So like she would, okay, so you dance. would tell her, cause you're, would you call yourself an intuitive cook? I would say that, you know, after I had Laszlo, I had this autoimmune issue happen with my thyroid and went hyper. And I had to learn about all of these alternative flowers. And I had to go on this AIP diet for about a year where it was like no grain, no soy, no egg, no alcohol, no chocolate, no co I mean, like basically I could eat meat and vegetables. Right. But, you know, what I could do was like take cassava flour or tiger nut flour and like make breads and you know all the things that I missed. Um, so that having that information made going into this so much easier because I I knew I was like okay I want to talk about you know how do I make a schnitzel that's grain free? How do I make a scone that mm -hmm. I can have in the morning that tastes amazing that doesn't have a bunch of sugar and other shit in it? And I do think a lot of parents I know personally that like. I'm very sensitive to like the allergy requests, you know, when you pack your kids' school lunches. But I will say that I got to a point where I was like, I don't fucking know what I'm making. You're make, you're eating the same thing every day because yes. I can't like, be creative, right? And think of new ways to not put, yeah, just like a sun butter, butter on sandwich. something, <laughs> like a yeah, sun butter a sun butter sandwich exactly. <laughs> yes. yes. Birdie's like, I can't eat another one, mom. <laughs> so last one says, "You're no sun butter." <laughs> um, so this is okay. So that's great. And so, are is there anything that like Laszlo will not eat? Laszlo and has a there's a war on blueberries in my house. What? Okay. So it's weird because blueberries I find to be innocuous. Uh huh. Uh, but for him, it's like the unpredictability of not knowing if you get a, if you get a bad one. Yes. So he'd rather go for an apple. So blueberries come home all the time, but there, it's a war on blueberries. It's a cold war because neither of us talk about it. It just uh -huh. is ongoing. Uh, so I just keep sending them mm -hmm. and we're I gonna see your, where that leads. I liked your little trick of squirting the, um, when yogurt, the yogurt, yeah. yogurt into the raspberry. Yes. Have you frozen those? In the summer? No, I should. I think that that's next. That sounds amazing. Yeah. I've made the yogurt bark, you know, where you take the yogurt on a I've sheet. I've seen that, yeah. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think I can do that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like it for you. Um, <laughs> wait, wait, I was just going to ask you something. Ooh, I don't remember. Anyway, so, okay, so Laszlo's having a war on blueberries. Okay, this is a very New York question, guys. And I just, are, do you, have you all just raised your children here? Okay. Okay. 
<laughs> so the fruits and vegetables here in New York City leave something to be desired a lot yes, of the time. it's true. And my children are California Hollywood Farmer's Market children. Yes. Who oh, I know. The Farmer's Market, they're spoiled. They're so spoiled. And since we've moved here, it has been the fight of my damn life. Yes. To get them to eat fruits and vegetables. Yes. And to, so what am, I do, what am I doing wrong? Where am I shopping? What are we doing? This is just a New York question. This isn't even about dictator lunches. I just need to know. What am I doing? So it is hard. I go to the farmer's market at Union Square, but often, you know, I would say in a month or so, it's only going to be apples. apples. <laughs> it's true. It's true. You guys, I can't do another winter with just apples. <laughs> I know. You, you got to get into the pumpkin, the squash. You got to get into the pumpkin. What are we doing with squash for these children? Okay, listen, we're taking pumpkin. We're putting it in a blender. Okay. We're adding some coconut milk. Okay. A little cinnamon. Uh -huh. And then it's really a yummy, very sweet sort of soup, if you will. Do you think they would go for that? <laughs> do they eat soup? Well. What about a roasted pumpkin? Mm -hmm. They're very sweet. Have you? What about you putting Pappy's? You know Pappy Van Winkle, that bourbon. They make. <laughs> listen, listen. They. You know, you gotta follow me on this. They make a maple syrup. Okay. I, I'm okay. not kidding you guys. Okay. You don't. You could just eat the eat it by the spoonful. The ma that maple syrup okay. on even a sweet potato. Okay. It's a like game. They'll changer. do a sweet potato. We'll do a sweet potato okay. in our house sometimes, okay. depending. I want to be more creative. I want to do this, but then also, it's, it seems hard. It's not. I promise you. That's the thing. I keep telling people. It's it's really. Do you prep? Do you guys prep? It do you takes like those also this is seconds. Wait, like I, how do you, how do you get your groceries home? You have them delivered. You have them delivered. You guys, the lady had to walk me home. <laughs> she really did. And it was, I felt like. Also, Italy has great produce. Okay, somebody did tell me that. Yeah, they do. I have a bombshell for you that I feel like I just have to disclose what? to you right now. What? That I just looked over to my left and my dad is here. I know. How did you know? I, did you not hear me lose my train of foot when I went, oh my God. And then I lost my train my and I went in into like audience. a fugue state. I saw Dr. Art Mullen you guys. walk in and I was like, so my childhood who celebrity don't know is him, here. Now you all get to meet him. He's here. <laughs> I, he must have flown in from Arizona. I had no idea. I didn't. Jason I was like. didn't tell me. I swear to God. You didn't know? Did you see, wait, did you Nobody see me knew. right at the beginning where I went, oh God. And then like, I like, and then I was like, lost my train of thought. This is really crazy, guys. I'm so excited. I was so excited. And, I didn't, and then I didn't want to call it out because I did want this moment. This is it crazy. It should be your surprise, not mine. Well, I heard his voice. I heard his voice and I was like, wait, are they piping in people who are listening? Because I knew it was my dad's voice. Oh my God. Oh my God. Weird. We can hear the audience who's watching at home. Dr. Art Mullen, everybody. Guys. My God, he said, Jason can keep a secret only two seconds longer than I can, which is true. Can you he make... He is such a yenta. He, I would have known. It's true. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like sweating. I'm like so excited. It's so crazy. I know. It's I, know. I know. It's so exciting. There is the mullen shaking here, by the way. exciting when your parents show up unexpectedly? Okay, fair enough. Listen, we all have trauma. You know what I mean? And like... Mm. Also, and the last time he saw us on stage together, we were probably doing House of Blue Leaves... Scottsdale, Arizona, Guys, Chaparral, Chaparral Theater, something. I don't know some show. Probably. Sure. Did he we not weren't come in New York when City. We were doing your TV show. No, no, he didn't. I don't think so. I don't think so. But so I that feel like fun. we've arrived, busy. I feel like we've made I think, it. I think we really have made it. <laughs> I, I like. I um. You guys, Jenny. <sighs> I am so happy for all of your success, obviously, but you are such a insanely talented writer. And oh, I'm curious if, because I know that when we both went out into Hollywood, like we were trying to be actors. Yes. And 
was writing something that you always knew you were talent, gifted at? You always no. knew you were good at? Again, like I was dyslexic. I was not in AP English. I didn't think that I could, I never, I never would have had the audacity to think that I could really write anything. I mean, I still can barely spell, <laughs> to be honest with Spelling you Spelling is overrated because so, there's like, you know. Yes. I just knew I you. wanted to tell stories. I knew that I was a storyteller. And I think that when you grow up and you go to public high school in like, you know, a small town, you find theater and that's just your way in. You just, you don't, nobody says to you like, oh, you could actually like write the shows that... You well, know, back then they didn't. That didn't, they didn't exist. No. It wasn't like possible to write your way out like Hamilton did. Really, it's I, truly that's the truth. No, but it was. But it wasn't. It and especially as like women starting out in oh Hollywood, God, for like, sure not. If anyone had yeah. led me in that direction at some point, I would have been like, yes, I'll oh, do yeah. this instead of like exactly. trying to go get horrible jobs. Right. What's the worst audition you had when we were young? Oh my God! I mean, so many bad auditions. Oh, good. Oh, so many Tell bad us auditions. One. Okay, let's see. Um, oh God. Oh my God. I mean, a soap opera. I did do a. I tested on Passions. <laughs> Which one? What was it? I guess not. I guess not. <laughs> no, there were so many horrible, horrible auditions. I mean, Especially like that, the that era, like the oh late nineties, early two thousands. Like, yes. did you have any? Um, like, I remember one audition. I was told that um, I needed to wear a spaghetti strap tank top and flip flops. Non negotiable. <laughs> that was like part of the audition. It was for a huge movie. You guys, I was like the fuck is that like it's the guy the director like has like a foot fetish but you can't say no you couldn't say no no, no. I know when all the, the me too stuff started coming out I was like that was just like LA in the like early aughts <laughs> it was just like what LA was oh my god now you sound like a French woman who's like I mean whatever I don't no but that, I mean don't you feel like deal? not that what's the just big like, deal but it know. but it was it just was you that you just get a little ripped it's not <laughs> don't you feel like that was so many auditions back then yeah that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, I had so many weird, like, oh horrible God. auditions that were like, ridiculous. I remember reading one script, and, it, and it's like, with her legs spread akimbo. I'm like, <laughs> excuse me? Come again? Excuse me? Well, I'm glad yes. things changed. And so then, yes. um, <laughs> I don't know if they have, guys. We're, uh, we're I really just don't in know. different yeah, places in exactly. our lives. I remember you saying to me at one point, um, probably, like, Eight years ago or so, you're like, oh, I'll never be in anything that I don't write yeah. again. Like, I don't want to act yes. if I can help it. Yes. But if I write something that I want to be in, I'll do it. Yeah. Do you still feel that way? Yes, yes. Because writing, you know, once I, after the first book, I was just like, oh my God, Jason, like, I have total control. When you're writing a book, it's like, you're not only like the star, you're playing every role. You're the master of the universe. You're directing it. You're, you know, you're producing it. You're like hustling to sell it to people in a 90 second street wide setting. It's just like you're every part of it and it's truly just you. You're not servicing somebody else's story. Right. So once I did that, I was like, oh, I can never go back. And then I think I did go, I did like a few Chicago fires and I remember. Oh, that's right, I remember. Yeah, and I remember being there and I was so, I mean, so obnoxious because I'm sure the whole time I'm like rolling my eyes. I'm like, oh, how long do I have to be here? What's going on, guys? Like I have like better shit happening. <laughs> you know, I was so like rude to that. I mean, Maybe I wasn't, maybe they didn't know how, like, I really felt internally. I was trying to be nice to their faces, but, yeah, I'm but sure that's you how I felt. I was just yeah. like, oh my God, I'm just like, I'm like a trained circus animal now. I, I don't want to do this. Right. I think it is, yeah, I think, like, taking that power back is kind of important. And I am, like, I love, you guys know, I mean... The novel. We all have read the novel. City of Likes. <laughs> Thank you, and I'm such a huge fan of the novel, and I'm so excited that you guys are working to make it a TV show. Yes. Are you going to be in it? No. 
I don't want to be in it. I mean, no, I want to have like nights to myself where I'm home in my pajamas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that makes dictator sense. lunches. I don't want to have to be stuck in cold and like starvation anxiety in like a shitty trailer on some like random street in Harlem, like thinking about like where my what are my kids doing? They're definitely not watching their television in German. <laughs> I need to get home. I don't want that life. I want to really just like be able to write something and that's it. But are you going to write it and like work on it? Yeah. Well, then you're going to be there anyway, just FYI. But in, but in a different capacity. I don't want to, yeah. I, I don't want to be hanging out at craft service being like, when are they done? I, I get it. I get it. It is a different, it is a different, different thing. Yeah. So I guess then my next question is like, we have the cookbook, the two memoirs, the novel. What are you going to write next? What do you want to write next? So I really want to do... I, I want to do another memoir. I mean, I know I, I, I know I have that in me, but the problem for me right now, the thing that I'm grappling with is like, how do I like stay true to my belief that I, I really don't want to exploit the kids. I don't want to use them for my comedy, but what do I do when they're like such fun characters that I really do want to exploit? <laughs> this is, like, I what mean, what do I do? I could like watch this is them the for modern days. parents dilemma. Because I do just feel like I want to just write the shit out of them. But I guess they probably have their own books that they will one day... Write about us. Well, I feel, I'll be lucky if they write about me. I feel like it's going to be like, so anyway, it's about me now. <laughs> I'm the main character of this family. You've all been waiting for it. <laughs> well, okay. So a little bit I wanted to just ask about that real fast. And then I have like some other weird questions that I like wrote down earlier today that I was like, you know what I want to ask Jenny? Because art was, like, kind of a local celebrity, yes. people knew who you were, and, like, if you went into, like, he, like, he lo you loomed large, art, in the yes. Scottsdale. So you grew up with a with a parent that sort of was, like... Yeah, larger than life. Larger yes. than life. And now, you know, having children, and you both are in the limelight, and, like... Oh, I tell you this. Yes. I think that it messed me up in some ways. Not like it, it wasn't my dad's fault. It's also made me, you know, a crazy like I'm I'm a, a workaholic. I'm driven to you know really, Succeed. I can't stop. Yeah, right. but I do think that it's hard. And I tell Jason this all the time about like his celebrity. I said it was hard having a dad that was famous. It's hard walking to the mall and having everybody be like Dr. Art, hey, hey, you know, and coming up to him because what it did to me at least, I was dealing with, you know, being dyslexic and feeling already like feelings of inadequacy and just like going through it. In the 80s, it wasn't fun. There wasn't a lot of help. Um, it made me feel not good enough. It wasn't his fault, but I just felt like I'm dwarfed by his, right. you know, sort of shininess in right. a way. Um, and... I mean, he's like my biggest fan. He's know, like, he there's nobody like a bigger he cheerleader than my dad. He just showed up from Arizona totally. for this talk. Completely. But yes, it was hard 100%. It's definitely, I think you have to really be cognizant of it the entire time. Yeah. And so how do you guys do things? Like, I know, first of all, like we have the difference in sh like sharing our kids on social media, but I claim ignorance just because I had my child... 14 and a half years ago and I like was just like right when Instagram started yeah. like, it was like my 15 friends and I was like yeah I'm gonna put and I could have stopped at any time guys let's be honest I get it but also I say to her, therapist. I tell you, you know, she was a mom in LA and I think it's different. A mom in New York versus a mom in LA, like your kids were at school and then they're in the car and then they're at your house. For me, they're it's like my kids like, are my on children the were street. literally like behind gates yeah, it's all different. the time. Yeah, it's like, like that is LA is weird, mm -hmm. but now we live in New York, yeah. which is weird. Yeah. Although, yeah, I mean, so aside from like, so I know that you guys made the conscious choice not to show their faces, mm -hmm. um, which I totally respect any parent choosing anything because I think it's all a fucking crapshoot and like they're going to be in therapy no matter what all of these children um but my question is like when you guys are out in public yes. if somebody is like oh my god right I'm sure I'm sure you because I get fucking white chicks 17 times a week I'm sure someone's screaming American pie oh yeah you do you get white chicks too oh baby 
Um, yeah. I'm sure they do. So they how, do, yeah. what do you like, how do you like sort of help course correct that for the kids? This is really just for me. Well, si Jason won't take pictures with people when he's with the kids. He'll be like, no, I'm sorry with my family. Right. So there's and wait, that. But how old is Sid now? He's eight and a half. And is Sid a fan yet? A fan of people in the world, celebrities, actors, YouTubers. YouTubers. Okay. Yes. So the shift came for me. I wouldn't take pictures in public. And the shift came for me when Birdie became a fan of other people. Oh. And then I saw Birdie's face when I said no. And Birdie was like, you can take a picture with that person. They just want to take a picture with you. Right. And I was yeah. like, oh, you sweet little person. Like, yeah. you understand now because yes. if only Harry Styles would... Right, right. Be around, you totally. know what I mean? Yes. And, and so Sid I, does that a little bit. He'll say, like, Dad, take the picture. Yeah, it's like, it's such a weird thing to try to, like, navigate. But I think it's really, I think giving them, when they get the context of, like, fandom, at least, I mean, I have, you know, big fans in my house. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're big fans of people. Yes. I think it's just, it changes things. Sid, they, Sid said to us, though, the, the thing that concerned me was he's like, so am I going to have fans one day? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> like I, I, you know, I don't want him to think that that's just like. Yeah, but I feel so, like in New York, you're already lucky because like people do so many different things here. Right. Oh, yeah. And that's why we definitely don't live in L.A. Because I did feel like a doctor living at the hospital in L.A. It's just too much. <laughs> it's just too much. It never shuts off. I mean, it never shuts off. No, it's like a one-trick pony, and the pony is, like, going to drive you to an early grave. Um, <laughs> okay, who is... I'm just going to ask you some random questions. What's the best restaurant in New York with kids? Oh, I like Barbudo. Barbudo? Barbudo. It's I'm, so close to you. Is too. anyone taking notes? I'll write it down. Uh, okay, Barbudo. Uh, what's your favorite restaurant in New York without children? Without children, oh God, um, we like a place called Jua. It's Korean and it's amazing. Sounds amazing. I don't know how to spell it. Um, <laughs> what do you feel like about devices for children in restaurants with headphones? Oh, I haven't done that, but I'm open to it. Mm -hmm. Devices for children in restaurants without headphones. <laughs> Not open to it. Not open to it either. What is the best meal you have ever eaten in your life? I just had it. <gasps> it was in Thailand. <gasps> it's at this restaurant called J Fi. The woman is 77 years old. She's cooking we gotta seven get days a week. It was like, it changed me as a human being. Really? Absolutely mind-blowing. Yes. We're in Thailand, Phuket? Or in where we're Bangkok. Bangkok. The food in Bangkok is out of control. It's did like you feel like Italy Anthony of Bourdain Asia. a little bit? Like, did you guys feel like Anthony Bourdain? Yes. Like, did you walk around? Like, we in tried. To, Jason and, like, definitely like, was trying to be, you know. Did you do voiceover that. in your head? <laughs> we should have. We really should have. Um, what is... The weirdest thing, this is more like a city of likes, less a dictator lunches question. You guys will get it. What's the weirdest thing your house has been sent, like, as a gift? Oh. I'll answer mine, too. Yeah. If you, tell you want me, me to go first. first. Yeah. One year, Discovery, the network, sent me a gigantic cake that was 3D in the shape of a shark. For sure. Uh, that's fun. Oh my God, my kids would have loved that. It was too much cake. <laughs> it was like a it was like the size of a wedding cake. That it was is like so four funny. feet tall. Okay, so that was have the weird you, that was definitely the weirdest. Have you ever had one of those um like Kim Kardashian style boxes on wheels come to you? Okay. I did have the Kim Kardashian. I was on the list in LA early, yes. early days. Early days. And so I did get one of those hearts that I got to like crack open. Those look fun. This wasn't was from Kim. Fun. This is just one of those oh, giant boxes. I mean, but on if, wheels. You're, if you're talking about like, no, like the Beyonce boxes? Yes. One was delivered to my house. Excuse me? No, not from Beyonce. Okay. It was huge. But they said to me, they're like, somebody's gonna need to be home. And I was like, well, I have a doorman. They're like, no, no, it's like 200 pounds 
we're going to need help, and there are people that are going to carry it in. So it comes into the house, and they said, by the way, don't open it until this date. So I open it. All of a sudden, it's like a laser light show. It's going off. There's a safe inside where you have to punch in a code. Then inside the safe, there's cash. I'm not kidding. That was like the best part. I was like, nobody's ever sent me cash. Um, shoes, Alice and Olivia dresses, like tons of, you know, things that they know that I love. And all of us, and then there was like a note about saying, you know, how you get cash back on this racketin thing. And all I kept thinking to myself was my kids are going to come home and they're going to get stuck in this box. And then of course, because again, everything is copy. I go to I wish my book wasn't out yet because I would have changed the scene where the son, where the oh babysitter God. gets locked out of the house so to good. the kid gets locked inside one of these influencer yes. boxes. Wait, and that's you have such to a... saw him out like a magician's magician. assistant. Yeah. I mean, save it for the I'm going to save show. it for the TV show. Yeah. I mean, I hope it's written down. That's amazing. Yeah. Wait, that's so funny. It was... And so weird. And so bizarre. Oh my God, and so fun. But it was literally like somebody's studio apartment in New York City, like a cute studio apartment. I'm like, I could just go out in the hall and live in this. <laughs> um, what is your favorite book growing up? What was your favorite book growing up? Do you remember? God, so this is also... I was I very... I you were dyslexic. Yes, and I was into um, all of these self-help books. I was into like... <laughs> I was in therapy from a very young age. So I liked like Dan Millman. I liked Richard Bach. I was into like very, Jenny. I swear to God. No, I remember bringing Illusions, Richard Bach's second book after Jonathan Livingston Siegel, um, bringing it to school and trying to make Trevor Rose read it. And I was like, this is really like, if you understand deep. this, you'll it's get me. deep. Yeah. You'll get me. <laughs> Did he read it? Of course not. Yeah. No, no, no. What is your favorite book? Do you read now? Yes. What is your favorite book in the recent past? I just read My Year of Rest and Relaxation. I oh, hadn't yeah. read it. I just took that with us to Thailand, and I, I loved it. It's so good. It's like a master class. It's really great. It, it was killer. Are they going to make that into a movie? Probably. But how? So I, I heard know. that Margot Robbie optioned it, but like she's just sitting there depressed. I don't know what, how you shoot that. I also just read a book called All Signs Point to Paris. Which oh, I know her. By Natasha. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know her. I followed her on Instagram. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, amazing. That's the same thing these days. That's the same thing. I followed her on Instagram, and I was, like, obsessed with the whole thing. Isn't that yeah. wild? Yeah, I loved it so much. Yeah. And I thought it was just so genius. Do you guys know what it is? She, like... So, basically, and her editor is actually here tonight. Oh! So, she could actually pitch you better. But, uh... It's basically about a woman who she... Gets divorced. She gets divorced. She has this tour de affair with this French guy, this like sexy, hot French guy in LA. And at some point realizes this is toxic. It's not going to be the relationship I want. I need to get away from him. And her friend gifts her a reading with a psychic or an astrologer who basically she says, okay, here's his birthday. And the astrologer says, yes, you're right. You're correct. He's not the one for you. Cut to, she's watching the news one morning, and it's like, let's say, November 8th, and she's like, oh my God, wait a minute. I gave the astrologer his wrong birthday. So then she calls the astrologer back, and she's like, I just want to double check. Sorry, it's probably nothing, but I gave you his wrong birthday. And the astrologer calls her back, and she's like, he's your soulmate. So then she sets out on this journey, because she's like, I can't be with that guy. Uh, she goes on this hunt to find a guy that was born in Paris on that exact day in the exact year. Right, because it's her soulmate. She's like, that is my soulmate. It's not, it can't be him. Mm -mm. So it's and a fun she, book. Like, it's fun. She documented it on Instagram. Yes. For a while, and then yeah. she wrote a book. Yeah. Well, I love it. I'm excited. I can't wait to read it. Congratulations to you, publisher. At <laughs> Sarah Pels. <laughs> um, okay, I don't know if you ever watched Inside the Actor's Studio, Jenny. Oh, yeah, I love it. I love it. Are you going to James Lipton me? I would like to ask you, based on Proust's, questionnaire. Oh, fabulous. What is your favorite word? My favorite word, hmm, my favorite word is Liebling. It's in German and it means favorite. Liebling? Liebling. I just love saying it. <laughs> it is. It's like a very cute word. Liebling. Liebling. Yes. Liebling. But, I, but it sounds I like used to call said Liebling and then I had another son and I'm like, oh, I can't use that word anymore can't call one your favorite. Which child is your favorite? Laszlo, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, okay. What is your least favorite word? 
Oh, well, it's a word. It doesn't. It's two words. My sons like to say it's one is real, one's sort of not real. It's balls in the jaws. It basically is balls in your jaw, I guess. But they say Who it really fast. Sid and all of his friends. So, Why? So they say balls in the jaws. What's the wrong balls with the boys? Jaws. I don't know. But I was walking down. I had dropped it off, and I was walking down to Tribeca, and one of his friends was walking with his nanny to be dropped off at school. Uh-huh. He didn't see me, and I just walked past him, and I'm like, the balls and the jaws and the balls and the jaws. And the kid turns bright red. He's just like, oh, my God, who is that lady? Are you the kind of mom, like, did you guys see This is 40? You know that movie? Yes. I don't remember it really well, but I do remember um, Leslie Mann, like, going up to the, like, eighth grade boy and being like, listen, you little motherfucker, I'm going to fuck yeah. you up. Like, do you feel like you're, you're going to do that someday yes. to someone? Yeah. Yes. I, I had to restrain myself at a bar mitzvah pickup last year, and uh-huh. I literally almost did it. And in my head, I was like, you can't do These people don't know you. Yeah. Like, you cannot do this. It wasn't the bar mitzvah boy. You know what I mean? It was like another kid. <laughs> I think it would have been fine. I restrained myself. <laughs> I want to do it so much. I'm sure. It's hard. Has anyone done it in this room? Raise your hand. <laughs> Confronted a child. You did. A, a boy, a, like a boy or a girl. Tell me this. Tell me the situation. How old? Okay. Okay. Yeah, those six-year-olds get in, they're wily. But wait, can I ask you a question? But was it a personal affront to your child, or was this a stranger child? But it was... Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, good for you. Good for you. I mean, I've definitely reprimanded children in public, guys. Let's be real. I'm not against it. I would want someone to reprimand my child in public if they were being an asshole. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I agree with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think people get too weird. Yeah. Although, I will say this, and it has been a detriment to my parenting. I am a person who, like, as soon as something happens, I'm like, what did, what did my kid do? Like, I'm not the person. And I'm always so surprised when these parents are like, like, there's, okay, whatever. I don't need to get into it. This isn't about me. This is about dictator lunches. <laughs> I just, I just think it's weird. <laughs> like when, like Birdie called a kid a misogynist and the parents got upset and they called the principal and I was like, didn't they ask him why Birdie would call him that? <laughs> like, didn't they have an inquiry as to why he was called that? <laughs> and it was because he was like standing outside her math door like, doing that it's misogynistic anyway let's get back to these Jenny what turns you on oh my god um I think people who are really motivated and driven I love that I love when I see somebody who's really passionate and just has that tenacity I do too what turns you off um, when somebody doesn't follow through, when uh, somebody tells you they're going to watch your kids and then they don't show up, <laughs> to be honest. You have like a nanny, right? You're still in nanny vibes. Yes. Yeah. But, but they nanny me. They really nanny me more than my kids. Well, yeah. Like I need taking care of. I need, they put pills in my mouth. Like they make me swallow. Yeah. It's like they brush my hair. They put my shoes on. I'm not kidding. Sometimes, literally, I was leaving the house yesterday frazzled because when you're selling a book, you're just so desperate because you want the first week of sales is, is just so important. And I was walking out of the house and I'm still on my phone writing emails, trying to get, you know, as many people to buy a book as possible. And SD looked at me. She's like, you don't have shoes on. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> you would have just done it. I would have. You would have just gotten I would have figured it out. Yeah. You would have figured it out. Okay. What? Sound or noise do you love? I like that question. The sound of my deceased poodle, Mr. Teats, chewing carrots. That was the best sound in the world. Can you still hear it? Yeah. Do you have phantom teats? Yes. Yeah. Where I feel him at my feet at night. Yeah. But now we're like jumping like or jumping sort of off toy. the couch or something. Yes. Has anyone had like a beloved animal that's passed and then you have the phantom, like you can hear them jumping down or like. Yeah, it's. 
teats, we know you're with us. There's actually a recipe in here that, for whatever reason, in this book, it didn't print. So, there, but the recipe is here. So we'll see it maybe if there's a second printing. But I did a teats cookie, and it was shot next to teats's ashes. And you should have seen, you should have seen. Uh, you should have seen Monica, who was my food stylist, and, and Lauren, who shot the book. I mean, I, when I brought the urn in, and they're just like, Jenny, please, like, don't. Where are you going to put it now? Where's it going? Because it kept moving around, and there's just, like, you know, sand in it. And they're like, well, there's ways in the kitchen. Where, where are the ashes? It slept one night overnight on the set. On set? Yeah. He was fine. He didn't know he the was difference. Fine. Yeah, yeah. He was fine. What sound or noise do you hate? I hate the sound of my kids in the morning. <laughs> Do you guys both get up with the kids in the morning? Or no, is it I one, get up with one them. of you? I get up with them. Who sleeps in their bunk? Yeah, but that's a choice you make. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. How do you know I'm comfortable? <laughs> Listen, I think, like, you guys know, you you know Eve, and, yes. like, did you guys read that, what's the book called? Fair Play? Fair Play. Fair no, Play. I don't want him reading Fair Play, because then he'll realize he's doing too much in the marriage. I know, I know. We need to keep that book far away from Jason. So would you say that Jason does more things, like, yes. related to the children than you do? Yeah, yes, in some ways, for sure. He dresses them, he packs them for any type of trip. Who does the school call? Me. Always. Yeah. Doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. And I pick They'll the after school you. activities, the scheduling of those things. But yeah, I make Jason. Jason got a call from the nurse, yeah. You did? What happened? I don't fucking know, but. But the thing is, I never answer my phone. You know that, that documentary that just came out about, um, what's his name? What's his name? The guy, the actor, Army Hammer. Oh my God, did you guys no. watch it? It's Listen, out. Listen, let out. me just, let me. What are we doing here? Let me just tell you. Let me just tell you. So it's all about like he's a do he's a dom and he needs like a submissive to sort of like control. And I was dead because I was dying laughing because he literally would call these girls like 17 times a day and they had to answer the phone and they had to be My able shirt to do shirt open again. Yeah, wait, what? So wait, he'd call wait, you, he'd wait. call you like 17 uh -huh. times a day. You have to be like available to talk and oh, I was like Oh, it's like Nexium, like the cult. So I would last like one day cuz he'd call and be like, "Where the fuck she and I'm, I'm like I don't know my phone it might be at the bottom of a lake I have no idea I never answer the phone I'd be the worst submissive ever you answer I the phone fail. when I call oh that, that's sweet nobody thinks that oh. I've never heard anybody say that you have I've <laughs> called you several times call, and I've answered <laughs> Jason does not think I'm like I a answer. 90s teenager I prefer a phone call to a text every time I'm but not I don't like often know where the phone is teenager. Is that why do you? At night. I don't even know. Do you keep? Do you believe? Okay, so like we're into healthy stuff. Like, what's the screen time sitch in the in the home? So they can have iPad on the weekend, mm -hmm. um, but oftentimes they lose it mm. because it's like our only bargaining chip at the moment. There's the constant threat. Actually, I think somebody needs to like do a spoof of Jason for just me personally of him threatening to take away Roblox. That's it. I'm deleting Roblox. No, for real this time. I'm done. Where's where's the iPad? And then he goes and storms off looking for it. But like, you know, he's not going to actually go get it and delete Roblox. He's fully bluffing. Do you guys read the Roblox chat? Never. Do you? I turned it off. No, oh, they it's off. So he, they can't chat with their friends. Yeah. But I did make my own Roblox account. So that I could I know, follow I him one, throughout Roblox. Well, I did, I had one too, but I don't know how to do any of it. And I was like, after I did Hoffman Institute, I had this like, you know, realization that like, I need to play on their level. And then I was like, that lasted one week. And I was like, I'm not doing that. I instantly bought myself a Ferrari and a Mega Mansion. <laughs> I, have, I have succumbed and I do watch the YouTubers, but that's mostly because I want to make sure they're not being indoctrinated. Yes. No, I'm with you on that. Mm -hmm. Be careful with boys. You know, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> and also, it's never too young to talk about fentanyl. I'm also going to say that to you, this room of mothers. It's those two 15-year-old girls in L.A. I literally almost threw up, and then I started hysterically crying like two days ago when that happened. Oh. Two 
15 year old girls overdosed on fentanyl because they took pills that they had gotten like on TikTok or something. You know, they were like trying to get Zanny. And yeah, it's not a, it's not a like, it, the thing is, is that kids are so fucking stupid and <laughs> they are, they just are dumb and they're like, and they don't think about anything. And like, I don't know, I, the fentanyl thing is real. And I think it's more real on the West Coast than it is here on the East Coast. Yeah, it's a big LA thing right now. It is a big LA thing, but like, I don't know. But I still think, I'm always surprised. Like I talked, to, I started talking to Birdie about drugs and sex, like, at nine or really? ten, yeah, like just not in like a deep way, like not like in like a real yes. intense way, but just like laying groundwork for yeah, right. having the conversation. And then I got, if you have teenagers, you know, you need to get the Narcan and just have it in your house, and then you tell your teenager, yeah, I'm sorry, guys, but this is I'm being real with you right now, okay? Because <laughs> the last thing you want is a dead fucking teenager, and oh you don't want your children. You don't want like we can like make the lunches cute, but if they die of an overdose, we're you know who cares? Um, but like yeah, so you get Narcan, and then you just tell your kid like just FYI, I have Narcan. If any of your friends are ever overdosing, you have to call me immediately. Okay. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, I'm not actually. This is just, it's just important stuff. Yeah. An EpiPen. An EpiPen and Narcan, guys. Mm. You laugh, but it's the world we live in. Okay. So, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? What do you consider your profession? I consider myself a, a writer, you know, at the end of the day. And that's what I, like, I think why I got so into these lunches, because I wanted to tell a story with well, the lunches. This, lunches each have their own story, and I love it so much. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so a really, writer. Um, what profession other than writer would you like to attempt? I would like, I think, maybe to do some sort of entrepreneurial thing. I would love to... You know, because I think you and I, it's like people come to us and they want us to sell their products. I wish I had maybe my own, pro some something that yeah, I could what be would selling. it be? I don't know. Maybe it would be healthy food for kids, but it's like, how do you scale that shit? I don't know. Something. I think Jen Garner did it. You know, baby yeah, food. Yeah, something. I don't know yet, but I would like to venture into that world. I would buy whatever you sold. Oh, thank you. No, for real. Like, I, anything. Well, listen, you don't have to buy anything I'm selling. I'm surprised you're not, like, getting into the jewelry biz. I like making jewelry, but that's, like, crafting again. I just like coming up with the idea. Like, when I used to make headbands. I just love a glue gun. I love googly eyes. I love... I love to just Me craft. too. But I'm not... But you're, like, the cakes you make, the animals, that you're, like, a different level of You that can do craft. that now, too, though. No. You can, Jenny. I've seen it. <laughs> no. Okay. Jason um, says I have to finish. No, we're doing we're, we're oh, doing Q &A. the Q and A. But wait, okay. I have two more questions. What profession would you not like to do? I don't think that I could. I hmm. I mean, anything with math. <laughs> anything. So it's like, what's thirteen times five? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I agree. I I start to I panic. Like, Even if I know the answer, it can't come out of me. No, I couldn't like be a barista or something. Like, you, like I couldn't take mm -hmm. someone's change. I couldn't give change. Do you know I what I mean? Was like a that's where I was a barista at one point, and I and I also worked at Mountain View Yogurt. But I started giving yogurt away for free. That's why I was fired because I couldn't work the register. So I was like, you can just have it. Can you work <laughs> on a? Can you work on a like grain free um, barbecue chicken pizza for me? Absolutely. Oh, I could do that. Yeah, I could do okay, that great. today. Okay, this is the last question. <laughs> Sylvia and I could do that. From James Lipton, but not really, but yes. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Teats is right over here. Oh, <laughs> it's so good. Why is it always the best? Okay, we're going to take some questions from the audience. If you have a question, raise your hand. Anyone? We've given you guys a lot. We've yes. given you a lot to think about. <laughs> Hi, Nancy. Okay, so the question is, how are you, how are you going to get the preteen to try new things like salad and soup? Well, I would get the things that you know she likes and start working the other stuff in. For instance, if she's into like... I don't know if she does mashed potatoes, but it's like, you know, then I would try taking a different root vegetable and mashing it the same, you know, 
blending it the same way. And I, I think it, I think it's all about taking the familiar and then just like th- turning it on, on its head a little bit. I have a white fish salad recipe in here that I throw a beet into. And it, all it really does is sort of change the color, but it also adds, you know, a lot of vitamins that you otherwise wouldn't be getting in a fish salad. S- things like that. Or like, you know, I do a, a corn rib where I take the corn, I cut it in half, and it's so crazy because when you throw a corn, I, these are just weird things that I've learned you know, fucking up in the kitchen. You, When you throw it into the broiler, if you leave it in a little, maybe let's say a little too long, it starts to curl and then they look like ribs. And if you cover it in like a sweet paprika and again, I'm gonna pump that pappy's maple syrup, some maple syrup, it tastes so savory and it's awesome. And it's, you know, vegetarian and so easy. We cheap. Um, where do you stand on air fryers? Well, I've, I've burned... I've almost burnt our apartment down three times. With air fryers? We currently don't have an air fryer okay. because I melted the last one because I was using a pot and boiling water too close to it and it literally burnt a hole in the side of the air fryer. So we had to sadly get rid of that one. Oh, yeah, no, I'm no. not... Tr- like, so if I had like- a cooking show busy, it would end every time with the fire alarm going off. Like, that's what I'm really... It's that's relatable, who though. <laughs> yeah, like that's relatable. who I am. Anyone else? Questions? Questions? For Jenny, about any of the books. For Dr. Art Mullen. <laughs> yes, exactly. For me, Busy Phillips. Um, for Jason Biggs. He's right here in the front row. I have a question. What's, uh, how did you guys meet? We met doing a movie together years ago. And I won't get into the story. It's so long. <laughs> It was love at first sight. It wasn't love at first sight. For him, it definitely was. For him, he was obsessed with me, but um, I was jealous of his fame. I didn't like sure. the fact, again, that I had met another yes. man that was eclipsing me. It was the last thing I wanted in my life. Interesting, isn't but, it? Right? I mean, yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Then I ended it up marrying him. It is weird that we marry our dads sometimes. And then- we do. But he's not my dad, because he's also my mom on so, in so many ways. He really is. He really is maybe even more my mom in some ways. At least with, at least with his penchant for, yeah, partying. Former um, penchant for partying. Wait, you guys, how long have you been together now? It'll be 15 years in April. Oh, my God. 16 years together. That's amazing. Crazy. I love it. I love of course, nobody thought we would stay together. We were married within nine months of knowing each other. No, I know. I was really mad when he came to our high school reunion. Yes, it's so funny. I know. Because you guys had just started dating, and I was, like, really excited to go back to the high school reunion as the most famous person. <laughs> exactly. And then it was immediately thwarted. Yes. By the presence of Mr. 1997 himself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 97 to 03, there were many movies. There were lots of, hi, yes, in the back. What is Yes. Well, I think, well, one of them that I just had tonight was the coconut rice, the Guatemalan coconut rice. It's LV My Nanny's, it's like a take on her recipe. I am obsessed with it. I'm probably going to go home and finish whatever my kids didn't eat of it tonight. That is a killer recipe. I've tried every coconut rice in the city at this point, and that one is the best. Okay, I'm going to make it. I'm excited. No, it's so good. It's so good. And also, um, I love the the chicken curry that I do. It's so easy. It's so easy, and it's so good. Okay, I will do that. Yeah. I could do it. You can. No, trust me. It's so easy. Okay. Because I think, you don't under. I really don't do a lot of cooking. You'll you will be fine. Okay. There's okay. like three or four steps to most of these. Yes. The carrot hummus is also bomb. Yes. That's a good. That's a good point. I don't even care if they eat the bribe first because what happens for what I, what I like to you know sort of 
well, I think we all sort of realize that this idea that like, you know, kids don't have a lot of power, right? And and not eating or, you know, like sort of putting their foot down with food is sort of the only way to sort of exert some power and control over us. And when you're feeding your kid and you're in front of them, it's a different power dynamic. And I think it's harder. I think it's harder with breakfast and dinner. But when they go to school, you're out of the equation. It almost doesn't matter if they eat the bribe first because they still aren't having that same experience with you. There's not the power struggle. And I do think that they end up probably eating more than if, you know, you know how at night when you're standing in front of them and you're like, one more bite, one more bite. I have found, and I just am going to offer this, a trick is that I do ask when Cricket goes to play dates. I'll say, and they're, and they're like, does Cricket want to stay for dinner? I'm like, yes, what are you eating? And then they tell me, does she have any things? And I'm like, if you could just like put it on her plate and make it seem cool, don't listen to what she said. Don't ask her. Yes. Just like whatever your family is eating, give to her. Yeah. Because I think that like peer pressure and another Totally, mom, it's true. And so maybe we need to like all band together as mothers if we have yes. picky eaters and trade off dinners. It's true. And then like... Because Cricket will come home and she'll be like, oh my God, guess what? I tried this and I liked it. I'm like, yeah. okay, yeah, great. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It is so much yeah. different when they're not with us. I mean, bless, of course. Yes. Well, so that, so I feel like my agent, Haley Heideman, who's here tonight, she was sort of, I feel like really the visionary behind this book in so many ways, because I knew that I had this lunch thing happening and I had tried to sort of pitch it at first as like, okay, is it a cookbook? Is it, you know, what, what genre is this even? Um, and for this book, particularly she, you know, she kind of had this vision for it that it was like it's curation as well as uh you know recipes and I think that f sort of figuring out like what it is you know you want to do whether whether you are a chef or you have sort of an angle I think really honing the vision before you take it out is huge because what I did at first was I'm like well I'll just take it out like I make lunches I don't know maybe it's just a coffee table book maybe it's just photos of the lunches um, so yeah, you need to find somebody if it's not you to really just sort of shape own the vision, shape what it is you're doing. That's so great. Okay, we have one last question over there. Well, Lazo likes to say he's like, when are we gonna do the eating competition? Because he thinks it's an eating, co I don't know why he thinks he's in an eating competition. Because I have him and Sid, while there's like a photographer shooting pictures, and then there is this like epic shot in the book, I'm not sure where it is exactly, but of Sid shoving Laszlo's face into the cake. Uh, you know, and, I, and every time he'd have to pull something out, he thought like, oh, this is a competition. There it is, I found it. Yeah, so he's like, uh, when, when am I gonna do another eating competition? Yeah, but they, they loved it. Sid's a mad. He didn't approve one quote that I unfortunately read to him after the book was printed. Oh, my God. He was upset, so he wants that to be removed in the Wait, second Wait, what's printing. the quote? Oh, it was just a quote. You know, it's a sweet quote. I, and, I, and I thought, I, it's about, um, you know, he was asking about kings and queens and princesses uh -huh. and, you know, the royal family. And, he's, and I said, oh, you know, they have kids that are your age. And he said, oh, um, Princess Charlotte's my age. He's like, hold on. So that means, like, if I were to marry her, then I would be a prince. And I said, yeah, I guess it does. And he's like, well, that's it. I guess I'm in love. And I'm like, oh, my God, this kid. Like, as you can tell, there's a theme here. Oh, my God. He's that's angling. He wants control. Power. Really funny. Dictator. I'm living in an autocratic regime at my house, and my son is going to be well, I have to say, the next king of England. Maybe, <laughs> possibly, but you've managed to be incredibly creative and like make all of us laugh and inspire us as parents at the same time. So I'm grateful for his Thank regime you. and so grateful that you and I, after 30 whatever years I mean, are still friends so and I crazy. love you so much. I love you so much. And I'm Thank so glad that like this. we live in the same city now. Like so close to and each And you're going to show me where the good produce is. I am. I am. You guys, thank you so much for coming. Thank if you, you haven't gotten so the copy of the book, coming. please get a copy of the book. Thank you, babe. Are you going to sign books? Yeah.
And Jenny will sign your book. And maybe Dr. Mullen will sign too. <gasps>